Hey guys, this is National Master Kevin Yang, back at it with another video. So, this one will be for with our chess club member, Fooplicious. And let us begin. So, this was a Dutch that went quote unquote horribly wrong. So, you know, sometimes the Dutch does go wrong. That's okay. D4, F5. Bishop g5, this is a very tricky line. Um, some people, I believe there is a main line that goes h6, and Fublish just did play it. Bishop f4, now I believe the main line's bishop h4, and after g5, bishop g3, um, what was it, like knight f6 or something? No, 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 it was like after g5, e4, right? Was it like this? I don't know. It might have been e3. e3, yeah. And after knight of 6, bishop g3, there might be an h4, but I don't know. Something like this. There, I vaguely remember there is such a line like this, but even I'm not sure. h6, bishop f4, our Fublicious plays g5, and I play the very sneaky move e4. Simply put, queen h5 checkmate. d6 occurs, queen h5, king d7, bishop takes g5, just take the advantage of this pin on the rook. Queen e8, queen h3, put another pin on, knight f6, I play take, take, queen takes f5, king d8, Another pawn for me, bishop e7. And you can see that based on my pawn advantage, all I'm doing now is just developing my pieces. And after knight e5, d takes e5, and that is the end of the game. So what can we learn here? Well, just, I guess, um, don't play h6. Maybe that's the move. Um, I believe knight f6 is the move. And after bishop takes f6, e takes f6, there's d5, bishop d6, g6. I don't know, I think this is a line as well, but bishop g5 is a, is a very tricky move against the Dutch. So, yeah, I mean... Um, obviously it wasn't a great experience having to lose in 15 moves, but always, you sometimes laugh at your own mistakes, just sometimes you do make those mistakes, and that's okay. Right? We should learn to forgive. We should not criticize, we should just think about it and move on and take it as if you can do better next time. So now we're against Fublishes again in this English opening. C4, and now I play the Dutch defense. Knight C3, Knight F6, G3, E5. So this is the all theory. Bishop E7, and now the move E4. Now, I believe I played this setup as black in a real tournament game and this was against like a 2100 and i remember that it was a somewhat smooth sailing game however the opponent never played e4 and i found this really interesting that foolish has played e4 now this is both a good and a bad move good being that it challenges the center it sort of says, what are you going to do, right? But it's also a bad move in that this knight can come here. Right now, this the square d4 is permanently weakened. So I just decide, let's take. But now after bishop takes, this is not the piece you want to take with. Because remember, the English bishop on this diagonal is always 
very strong. So you want to always preserve the English bishop. So take with the knight. But after bishop takes, I said, if you want to move the bishop back, you can. I was like, I'm going to give you a chance, but if you seriously don't want your bishop, one day I'll take it. So I gave our foolishes a chance. I played c6. I wanted him to retreat the bishop. After queen b3, another very adventurous move, king h8. And after knight g2, I said, hmm, do I want to take the bishop? I can always take the bishop because this bishop is actually very important. And sort of, if I need to come here, this bishop, if this bishop is gone, it's going to leave a lot of holes in the position. So that's one part, one other reason why this bishop on e4 is so critical to white setup. So I was like, I'm going to give you another chance. Knight a6. I'm going to just threaten knight c5 and just hope that you bring the bishop to g2. Bishop e3 happens, and I'm like, mm, I really don't want to take that bishop on e4 again. Because if I take on e4, d takes e4, I'm going to play something like maybe knight c5. Maybe I'm going to play d6, queen c7, and bishop g4, and infiltrate those light squares, right? So think about it this way. I have those kind of things as well. But instead, I play the move knight c5. I invite the capture of bishop takes c5. Um, my other plan is that if queen c2 happens, I want to play d5, and after take, take, I threaten the bishop, but also if the bishop moves back, I play d4 with a fork on the two pieces. So, Fuplishes was right to trade on c5, and after the trade, I felt like this move f4 was a little bit too adventurous, I would say. Because first of all, like I said, before you go on an adventure with some things, it's important to castle. I cannot emphasize that enough. A lot of people like to go on adventures, and a lot of people like to really be aggressive in terms of challenging the center. But it's also important at the same time that you keep your own home base safe and sane. Like after f4, I played the move knight g4. I Basically, I was like, well, I could probably play e takes f4 as well. So after knight takes f4, I could play something like g5 and knight g4 and bishop f2. Like, for example, if knight, let's say, hmm, knight f to e2, I could even play the move bishop f2 check. Because after king takes f2, there is knight takes e4 with the double check. I, I could play this move, but it might also be a bad move. So just the simple fact that I could even play bishop e3 and prevent you from castling both sides just suggests so much as to how this f4 move came a little bit too early. Right. So in the game, f4, I play the move knight g4. I said, look, I'm threatening the, um, maybe putting the knight on f2, maybe putting the knight on e3. We'll see. So after h3, I put my knight on e3, king d2, I took an f4. And I believe at this point, um, I was thinking maybe I misplayed this. After g takes f4, I was like, hmm, white's going to play d4 next. King takes a e3 is coming. So what do I do? And in fact, I have a better move here. And the move here is d5. Now you might be like, whoa, take, take, 
tag, tag, take. Right, so white's gonna gain a pawn, right? Yeah, but what's more important here is the bishop comes out, and all of a sudden, after knight c3, whew, there's this rook takes f4, just taking advantage of this pin. Right, so it's really dangerous sometimes. So after bishop takes d5, well, Bishop of five just simply lasering down the pawn behind it and just showing how weak this king is is also one way to improve the active play. So I guess part of my mistake is not recognizing that opening the position was the best move here. Knight f5, bishop takes f5, and at this point I was like, yeah, you know, I didn't make the most of it in trying to take advantage of this king's position, but I will do so now. So after h4, I said, let's go queen a5, and after king c2, play d5, knight g3, took on c4, just intending to swing my rook over, d takes c4, rook c5, rook a d1, bringing the bishop out now. Now, the reason why rook a d1 is a small inaccuracy is because of the move bishop e6. So what happens after, let's say, rook a e1? So now after bishop e6, all of a sudden there's the move knight c3. Bishop takes c4, queen takes b7, and these two pieces are not looking so hot. So instead... Rook a e1 just gluing down this bishop is actually the better move here. And I probably would have played b5. I don't know. It looks messy after knight d4. Rook takes c4. King b1. Just rook takes. Will rook takes bishop. And so after something like um, queen d8... There's probably knight f3 with the move knight e5, and it's all wonky. I would not like to analyze it because it is so dirty. King b1, well, this didn't happen in the game, but in the game, rook a d1 happened, and after bishop e6, queen takes b7, rook check, king b1, and here I considered, do I play queen takes a2, king takes a2, Rook b4 with the check to pick up the queen because there's a bishop looking at the pawn. I said, I have an attack going, so let's finish it off. Rook e8, queen takes e7, rook takes e7. Thinking about back rank mate, but no, no. Knight c3, rook takes c3, queen takes a2, rook b7, rook d8, and the move bishop g8 followed by rook b1 is going to seal the deal. So, what did we learn in this game? Well, um, we learned this bishop is really important. You know, if the bishop gets traded off, there are all these key squares that black can start infiltrating. Right? So that's one part of the plan. Don't give up this bishop unless you have to. So in this case, I just started building my center, and ultimately, another tip is to not to not explode at the center before you castle. Sometimes, you know, sometimes this is a good thing to explode at the center, but here. The king is very fragile, right? You castle here, you castle here. It comes with a lot of danger, but you have to do it because your king in the center, it just, it's not safe enough. And so essentially, even though I misplayed it, I was able to get the pieces coordinated and I hope you enjoyed my analysis. And I'll see you next time.